Hello everybody and a very warm welcome back to Tony Northeastern. And I hope you're all keeping safe and well. And as you probably noticed the roof has been lifted off the east station once again, hopefully for the last time. Um, because there's still work to do on it. So as we look around, it seems like an age now since we started this project. And we're almost there. So, let's see what I've been up to. And here's where it's all happening. Um, the cladding has now had two coats of paint which was matte 91 and I've now started to paint the three uh, edges if you like, the capping edges this one, this one and this one I'm going to paint them black uh, I'm going to leave the window framing as it is and just tone it down with a little bit of uh, weathering paint hence why I am masking off the windows um, especially to get the paint right in that corner because uh, I want to leave this edge white do that edge black so that's that's the plan there with that and as you can see I've um, been messing around with the tiles as well I added some black matte and uh, it's gone right into the grooves in the card and it's kind of highlighted it a little bit so we'll go into uh, that in a little bit more detail later on because I haven't done the other side yet I have now finished painting the black fascias there, there and the one on top of the cladding so now it's time to focus on the tiles um, and what I'm doing here is just adding some black matte paint and then wiping it off as quickly as possible um, I've already done a little bit there you can see now that the blue pen um, has disappeared and it's left a black imprint where the scribing has took place for the tiles and it looks quite realistic so I'm just going to do a little bit here and then just show you what I've done well, there we go and we'll just rub it off with a bit of kitchen towel as quickly as possible and there we have it still see a little bit of blue there but I'll just go over it again but then again I'm not too bothered because I've got the green wash to go over the top so yeah quite happy with that so far right so I have black washed the tiles so the next thing I want to do to get this effect which you can see just here is now I have added a little bit of thinners to this kitchen towel very little and what that's doing is it's just rubbing some of the paint off and you get this lovely effect of the rustic look of the tiles as you can see there so basically I'm just removing more grey paint and by doing so it seems to be going into the grooves and this is the section that I have done already as you can see it gives you that really good rustic look so hopefully it should match what I've already done on the other roofs I have just finished painting the top ledge with the 
ivory paint that I used on the fascia uh, right from the very beginning. So that finishes off of that little job. So while that's drying, which will take about 24 hours, um, we can focus on one other finer detail. There's one final detail that got missed off the main build of the station and that's that wrought ironwork that goes right across the top of the apex as you can see there. So that's what I'm going to do next. Um, I've made up a little drawing um, 10 millimeters high, 33 to the first bend and then up at roughly about 45 degrees that works out at and uh, and then it comes upright a little bit but that's what it looks like on the photograph but because of how the roof is made it's going to be slightly different to that um, how am I going to make it? good question I'm going to make it just by using copper wire so I've made a little template here so let's just see how we get on. I have now made a second template and I've put a little kink in this one so I know that that goes to one side of the clock and that one goes to the other side of the clock. So the next thing to do is to add in the middle um, pillar as it was, or the middle post. Um, so we know that that is 36mm from there to there. So we'll just come in 16, put a little mark there, do the same for the other one, 16. And then what we'll do now is we'll solder a centre post in, like so. Do, we'll leave that long for the minute. And then we'll do exactly the same to this one. The next thing to do is to add the top rail which goes right across the ironwork. So what I'll do is I'll Dip one end in the flux and just hold it right on that bend and then just solder it. Well, it's not as easy as it looks. Let's try again. Just push that a little bit. So that needs to be eight millimeters from the base of the. We don't want to bend that too much, otherwise it might not sit pretty. See if that's eight millimeters. No, it's not. So I'm going to have to unsolder it and then solder it again. solder a center piece. That's it. Let's 
got it. Right, so now we can add this piece. Just check that it fits in there first. Yep. Dip it in the flux, both ends. Oh, this is where it gets tricky. got it. We'll just check. Have we got eight millimeters this end? Yep, eight millimeters centered. Just need some push on. Square it up. Use the rule this time just to Got it. Let's check again. Eight millimeter centers. Yep. So just gotta get this one to this standard. So the next bit's going to be a little bit tricky. Um, what I'm doing, I'm just wrapping some copper wire around this 6.5mm drill bit. Um, getting it really tight and then just pushing it together to try and create a spring. So it gets, gets them really nice and tight. Once you're done, just pull it off. Now then. What I've done here is I've flanned it out a little bit, as you can see. So I've gone from that to this. Now the idea here is I'm going to cut this in half and solder it into each one of these panels. Just to see what it looks like. So once you've pulled the spring off and if you flatten it and then you can pull them apart and once you've got them pulled apart you can place them into your frame. What I've done is I've tacked it one side and got a screwdriver and just pulled them and manipulated them to get the circles equal. So now that I've done that it's a case of just tacking this little bit here just tucking that there and then hopefully that will be secure like so and there we go and once that's tacked in there it's just a little case of just pressing up and down to get them equally spaced and what we do, any cuts, just put a little tack across there and the same this side where it's been cut. And then that's one panel done. So now that we've uh, finished the, the panels and uh, quite happy with them, it's time to trim down the two outer legs, this one and this one, about just a couple of mil above the 8 mil, so that works out at about 10 mil. And what we do then, we just put a little bit of flux on the top of them, and then we just add a little bit of dab of solder. What it does, it just takes the sharp edge away. where we've just cut it and that should be more than enough and what we'll do we'll leave that leg long in the middle so that gives us something to hold on to when we're uh, painting it then we'll just 
cut it down to where that little bit of solder is. So, next thing to do is to paint these. I have now stuck the panels on the apex of the roof and so the last thing to do is to touch up where I have cut off the long legs or there and there. Just stick an extra blob of paint on there and on there. And that finishes that off. I think the the black and yellow go well together. I um, still have to touch up the yellow in a few places. But uh, yeah, I'm quite pleased with the way that that's turned out. Now that that's done, we can um, concentrate on the last few tasks to complete this roof. I um, don't know if you noticed, but I've been um, dirtying up the window frames of the roof. Um, I never painted them white. I just left them uh, as natural plastic. And so what I'm doing now is I've got some um, Citadel Earth Shade uh, basically what I'm doing is, is I'm just dirtying up these window frames really turn down the bright white that it is just to give it that gritty look that you would find um, on the roof um, if you go really really close up you can see how grimy the window frames are and uh, just by touching up the frames all I'm doing is getting rid of the white giving them a very very light brown earthy coating And that then finishes it off. And that's the stuff I'm using. It is really a fine wash. You can see I've got a white patch there and I'll just run that along and just tilt down the white patch. And there we go. It's finished. The station is finished. There are a few little jobs to do. Um, there's a signal gantry to go on the platform just about here. Possibly another one on that side um, at a later date. And there's also little finishing touches to add. The signal box um, needs levers got a kit for that so that's one job I don't have to scratch build as you can see John's waiting there to start work in his signal box so yeah there we are an epic journey is almost. I'm saying almost because there's always the little details, more details to add. But uh, it's been one hell of a journey.
to get this far. I'd just like to say thank you all for um, following me on this journey. One thing I'm really, really pleased about is the way the tiles have come out quite close in the way that they have matched each other. These were done by hand and these are the Medcalf ones. Now the ones I scribed by hand do look more realistic on the ones on the mid-calf, even though these were scribed and these were also scribed. Other little details I've had, yep, the seagulls have been added again. I put it on this end and on the top end as well, right at the top layer. So I thought that's where, well, if I was a seagull, I would definitely hang out on this point here. Oh yes, I would definitely hang out there if I was a seagull. So, you're probably all wondering, where does Tony Northeastern go from here? Well, the station is finished, apart from little details, a couple of pigeons, which I'll probably do a separate video on, because um, I'd love to have a go at making some birds, seagulls, pigeons, probably even some magpies. And obviously there's a blackbird that's got to be made to fit on that handrail that goes around the signal box. And uh, that's a story I'd like to, to tell you, or I might get John Cooter himself to tell you. Um, but yes, South Shields station's finished, but it's not the end of South Shields because there's a row of terrace houses and shops that go underneath that packaging. Underneath that packaging that's where the uh, foundations will be put in for some shops and some houses. And there's also a little bit of work to do around the yard. So before we bring this video to an end, it's been almost two years in the making. And... Um, I'd just like to thank everybody who has had a hand in helping me build what turns out to be so far the biggest project here at the North Eastern. Firstly George Tullin for sending me some very very rare photographs of uh, just before its closure. Um, anybody who has had given me help and advice, Jason Jay French team, John Cudahy, and everybody who has helped me with hints, tips, ideas, and so on and so on. So, on that note, we will um, see the EMU depart. But in the new year, we will have a grand opening of the station with uh, one or two special trains. But that's in the new year.
right so as you have seen I have finished the roof on time and just before Christmas which uh, it should have been finished months ago really it should have been but um, hey ho that's the way things go oh right <laughs> so yeah the roof itself um, I'm happy with it was always going to be the making of the social station it was either going to work or not work and to me it has worked so and adding those little bits of wrought iron work going across the top where the clock is that that finishes it off so yeah um, as I explained in the video the station's not completely finished there's still other bits to do but uh, at least now in the new year I can move on to possibly other areas of the layout so with that aside I've got a few announcements I'd like to make for some people who have got in contact with me and uh, the first one is for Kieran Jones it's for his granddad Kelvin um, Kelvin if you're watching Merry Christmas to you and a Happy New Year and the other message is for a Parish Smallwood um, wishing Paul Holiday uh, a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year and basically I want to wish all you guys uh, a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year especially the guys and girls who have given me a hand in building that task of South Shield Station so Without further ado, I think that's all for me this year, so have a good Christmas everybody, I'll see you in the new year. Bye for now. Bye.